C. Confidence. R. Resilience. O. Optimism. W. Willpower. N. Non-negotiables. Hey family, Ernestine Morrison, and I'm back with another episode of Beneath the Crown. Confidence, resilience, optimism, willpower, and non-negotiables. And you know, non-negotiables is my favorite part of the crown. And today I have the absolute pleasure of having my good friend, actress, Erica Page on the show. Hello, hello. With us. Um, first of all, can we just take a moment just for this beauty right here? <laughs> Take a moment Stop. of silence for how cute she is. Whatever. <laughs> another moment of silence for this one right here with her cute little oh, thank bob. thank you, darling. Yes. Well, thank you, darling. So as you guys know, on this show, we love our favorite actor, our favorite influencer, our favorite celebrity, our favorite athlete, whoever. And a lot of the times we don't know their journey and, and what it took for them to become who they are and step into their purpose and their walk in their power and build their, notice I say build, not wear, because you don't just wake up and wear a crown, a crown has to be built. Mm -hmm. You have to build the confidence, it has to be earned. Mm -hmm. You have to build the confidence, you have to build the resilience, the optimism, the willpower, and setting clear non-negotiables. So um, for those of you who don't know, Queen Erica Page here is an actress. Amongst many other talent, she's a beast workout person. I mean, she's in the gym. I'm watching her videos like, I need to get back in the gym. With I Erica. work out so I can eat, y'all. So, I mean, I work out, but the whole, like, nutrition part, not down. <laughs> Me too. We, we like to eat. We curvy girls over yes. here. But how do you think we keep our curves? That's what I, I, I tell people. I know. How do you think I, I keep my keep curves? I would keep this big old booty. So. <laughs> and it's just waist ratio <laughs> if I didn't eat so you got to eat but um, Erica and I have been on this journey for a while we've 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 um, worked together before over the, yes. over the fa- past few years and been in acting classes together I met you on a set yep yeah. on a, no wait we didn't meet on a set yeah did we meet on uh, we met in? Bruce Bruce that's when I first met but you and know, then we did classes I together after we knew each other before Bruce Bruce because did we didn't I'm the one who got you on Bruce Bruce I don't did we? Yeah. I don't I wanted remember. To, I know told Erica, uh, Terry Vaughn about you. Maybe that was it. I don't remember. Maybe. Yeah. But what class was it? How did I meet you? I, Clayton. Oh, God. Landy's class. I feel like that was way after. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to go back and like look through my Yeah, emails. me too. Because like, now like, I don't happen? know. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, so Eric and I have been on this actor's journey. And for any of my other actors out there, you know how the journey is. It's, yes. it's, it's very fleeting. Sometimes it's hit or miss. You can put a lot of work in, a lot of energy, and sow a lot of seeds. And you may not get the results that you want right away. Um, but Erica here has just booked her first series regular. Yes. Oh, second, actually. Second yeah, in, in, it's in, crazy. In a two month time span. And actually, right before I came here, I'm so happy I got. The f- we haven't been able to talk about the first one, and they literally sent all the promo stuff. And they're like, "You can finally talk about yay. it." So yay! Yeah, awesome, I'm super awesome, excited. Awesome. So tell us about you. Tell us about yourself. What you're doing right now. So my name is Erica Page. I have been doing this acting journey. I've been on this journey for about eight and a half, going on nine years now. Wow. Um, it's one of those things like when I was a kid, I kind of always had it in the back of my head, like I want to do that, mm-hmm. but I didn't believe in myself that I could do that. Yeah, you didn't so have I didn't confidence. even go for it. I didn't have the confidence yeah. at all. So you know, I did what you're supposed to do. I, I tried to go to college and I tried to get like a day job and a mm-hmm. corporate and do that yeah. whole life. And every time that I would have a different job, I was always like, "This is not. This is not, it. This is not, not fulfilling. It, like right. this is okay. This works for now. It pays my bills, but this is not like what I want." Yeah. And it took me actually getting laid off and losing one of my jobs. Um, during the recession and I wasn't able to find a job because there Mm -hmm. were no jobs at the time. Mm -hmm. So I started back working in restaurants and then I had the flexibility. What was your job before you were working? I worked in a CPA firm. I was an administrative assistant. Oh, so you were in finance. finance Yeah, so I was, I mean, I just did administrative stuff. So, but yeah, I was in that whole environment. Yeah. But when I started back working in restaurants that time was whenever I was like, you know what, now I have the flexibility. Let Mm -hmm. me just try this and see what happens. And the rest is history. So what has back. the journey been like? I mean, you're just now booking a series regularly. That you said eight, eight and a half years. Yeah, it's can, tough. Can I tell you the resilience? That's what. If, for those of you who don't know, I looked up the definition of resilience, and it says to be bended, to be stretched, to be broken, and being able to bounce back. Mm-hmm. Now, in that eight year journey, how many times were you bent, broken, and stretched? Oh God, so many times that I can't even count. But this is, you know, part of my testimony, my story that I'm, I'm so happy and proud to tell. Now, mm-hmm. um, last year I had a horrible year. I almost quit acting. It wow. was the worst year. I was depressed. It was the first time in my life that I ever questioned my dream. And mm-hmm. I was, it was, you know, 
acting, it's hard. Like you get a lot of no's. You definitely have to have thick skin. You have to be passionate about it. Mm -hmm. You have to really truly love the art or you're not gonna succeed because it'll tear you down, mm -hmm. literally. Yeah, Facts, yeah. it will totally tear you down. But no matter what, over the years with every single no that I got, it was like, okay, I gotta keep going. Like mm -hmm. I gotta keep going, gotta try again. That yeah. wasn't for me, time to do this. Let's try this way and do that. But last year was the first time that I was like, wait a minute, like maybe this isn't for me. Maybe God is telling me I should do something else because I didn't yeah. book anything for a solid year straight. A whole year. A, a whole year. 365 nothing. days, no booking, not a commercial booking, not nothing. a Nothing, nothing. Not a callback? Okay, I booked one show, but it was a non-speaking role, so I don't count that. Okay. Non-speaking doesn't count. Um, so and before that, I'd, I've been pretty lucky, like since I started to work, not consistently enough to pay my bills. Right. But you know, every few months I'd get a booking, a movie here, a co-star there, a commercial yeah. there. And it was always kind of somewhat consistent. And mm -hmm. 2016, I had this great year. Like I booked a great supporting role in a movie. I was booking, it was the most consistently I had yeah. ever booked up until that point in my career. So the end of 2016, I was like, 2017 is about, about to be it. it's about it's to about happen it's, yes, yes it's about to things are about to take yeah. off it's about to this is you know things are going to change and it was literally nothing like nothing and when i say nothing i mean no availability checks like i did get callbacks but no availability checks mm -hmm. none of that because mm -hmm. you know at least when you get an availability check you're like okay yeah i'm close tell, tell our audience what an availability so check as an is. actor um when you do tv shows and movies you know, you do your audition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll do a callback. When they do the callbacks, there's probably like maybe five or ten people they're calling back the audition, maybe less sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that, if you get an availability check, it probably means that it's between like you and one other person, or maybe you and like maybe two other people. But right. you're definitely in the very top, top picks. They're calling to see if you're available. Yeah, they're making sure that you're available. That way, if they decide to book you, that you are you're available for the dates that they need you for. Right. And if they don't decide to book you, well then, oh well, move on to the next, you know, the next yeah. thing. But you know, normally I was I would get at least availability checks mm -hmm. pretty consistently, whether I booked it or not. But I didn't get anything, so I just felt like God was pushing me in a different direction. Um, I'd been bartending throughout this entire mm -hmm. process, and I always did some other, you know, side jobs to make ends meet. Right. But bartending was always like my main thing. That was like, okay, that's gonna pay my bills. I can I know how much money I can right. make. They're flexible with my schedule because yeah. acting literally everything is so last minute. I remember getting to work one day on a Monday. And they're like, you got to You just booked this TV show. It shoots in Wilmington on Wednesday. You need to be in tomorrow. Wilmington tomorrow for the fitting. <laughs> so I'm like, five trying hour to get drive work, tomorrow for the fitting. Literally seven hour drive. <laughs> yeah. So it was literally that's how it is. And they don't. If you're not available, then guess what? Somebody, Somebody else, else will be, <laughs> and they'll move along like nothing. And you're going to be like, no, like yeah. I just lost an opportunity. Yeah. So I decided I was at that point. I'd reached a point in my life where I wasn't happy bartending. I knew that had to go. Mm -hmm. So I quit my job in June. I went to New York. Um, for a couple of months. And Let me ask you this, when you quit your job, did you quit your job with another form of income coming in or you just took the risk and no, said, I'm No, I took the risk. I mean, I saved, I prepared mm -hmm. myself for it. Like in January, I set a goal. I was like, okay, June, I'm giving myself until June. Mm -hmm. So I made sure I saved, I put money aside, gotcha. I had money aside for my trip. So I knew that I was in a, I had a cushion to be good for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so I quit my job, I went to New York and did a bunch of acting classes and workshops. And it was just an experience. I'd never done anything like that. How long that. were you in New York for? It was like five weeks, I think, six, six weeks. Okay. Six weeks. And I was there, it was a great experience. But I think in the back of my head, I had like, I kind of had this little like hope and expectation that I was gonna go to New York and something great was gonna happen. Like yeah. I was gonna book a great role or something. I just felt like something was gonna happen. And I went to New York and nothing. again, nothing yeah. happened. So I came back and I was like, okay, like now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. Like, what am I gonna do for work? What am I gonna do for money? So and when you came back, you didn't come back to a job. No, I came back to nothing. <laughs> like I came back and I was like, okay, time to figure out what I'm about to do. Wow. Um, so I had been, you know, brainstorming. I used to be in the real estate and mortgage industry before, and I had considered like going back to the mortgage industry was something that I liked, and mm -hmm. I considered maybe doing that. Right. And I was talking to a friend of mine, and she was like, "Hey, have you talked to to Ashley? She, you know, she's working at this mortgage company. Mm -hmm. She's doing really great. I know they're always hiring. It's a great company. You should reach out." And I was like, "Okay." And I was like, "Let me text her just to see like if it's flexible, because right. you know, for yeah, us, exactly. that you, flexibility is everything. If you don't have flexibility. flexibility, then it's not an option." Yeah. So I was like, "Hey, just trying to fill out the job." And I was like, "Is it flexible?" And she was like, "Once you get to senior level, it is, but that can take eight months to a year. Mm -hmm. Before that, it's it's tough." And I was like, "Eh, no, moving on. Not gonna, <laughs> right. not gonna not do that." Do and I let it go. And literally, I think it was like three days after that, I never see this girl like ever. And I ran into her at a restaurant, mm -hmm. and she was there. So of course, the whole subject came up right and we started talking and this the time mortgage company yes okay yeah so at this point it was I believe it was in August yes it was August because that's when I got back from New York um 
And we started talking and she was like, just asking more questions about the industry and mm -hmm. acting. And she was like, you know what? I really think you should give it a shot. She was like, really the first two months of the training is when you can't miss a day, like you can't. Mm -hmm. But after that, if you need a day off here and there, cause you know, with acting, you might book a role one day and you might not book another one for three months yeah. or two months. She's like, then you could use your sick days or right. you can make it work. Can, and then she's can, like, you can finagle. You can, you can finesse it and make yeah. it work. <laughs> and then once she, she was like, just bust your butt, get to senior level. And once you're at senior level, as long as you're producing, you can do whatever you want. And mm -hmm. I was like, hmm. And I was like, well, they did, they did trainings every few months. Mm -hmm. And she was like, the next training starts in November. Mm -hmm. So it's November and December. And November, December are normally pretty slow for acting. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh. You're like, that's perfect. So yeah, I was like, well, maybe God is telling me to do this. Like, it kind of could line up. It could work out. Right. If I do this job and do a great job, I can get to senior, have the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. do you know well in the mortgage industry, and then also be doing my auditions and bookings when I get them. Mm -hmm. And you know that was kind of my vision that I had going into it. And then <clears throat> what happened? Oh, to, so to, to start this job, there is like a big mortgage test you have to pass. And mm -hmm. there's a course you have to do. And it's really hard. A lot of people don't pass it the first time. So I was literally in my house for like three weeks straight, just busting my butt, studying like crazy. And, you know, I was prepared because I was like, you know what? I felt like God put this opportunity my way because mm -hmm. I'd already thought about the mortgage industry. And then I, I ran into her. The timing, I was like, you and know. You were like, oh, this is a sign. It sucked. <laughs> yeah. It was a sign in a good and a bad way because for me, I was like, God, like you're telling me to do something mm -hmm. that is not acting. But I do feel like you're telling me to do it. So I'm right. going to have to act on it. So I never will forget. <clears throat> you got my water? <laughs> the day um, that I went in for the mortgage test, I was in my car, I said a prayer, mm -hmm. and I was like, God, I'm probably going to cry before this is over. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try not to. I was like, God, this is not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I felt like, I feel like you put this in my path for a reason. Mm -hmm. If it's what you want me to do, I'm going to trust it and go with it and do my best and give it my all. If I pass this test, I'm going to take that as a sign as like, this is what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. So I went in, I did my test, and you get your, your results back right away. Oh, so, so it's right away thing. Literally. So, you know. so, I'm, oh, so wow. I finish a test, I click, you know, submit, and it's like the numbers are calculating on the screen. Mm. And all of a sudden I see, I got, I think it was like an 86. Uh -huh. I pass. And I literally just like busted into tears. Oh, I'm going to cry thinking about it. I just busted into tears. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, God wants me to do this. Like yeah. maybe. It was a moment for me of like, maybe God doesn't want me to be an actress. And like, this is what he wants me to do. And I don't want to do it, but I have to do it. Cause it's what he's telling me to do. Yeah. Like it's the first time in my life I can say that I really truly surrendered mm -hmm. to God and what he was telling me to do. I'd never done it to that extent yeah. before. So I started the job. Um, literally, I started the job the first day. <laughs> oh God, on the job, I had a manager at the time I have a miss. I look at my phone. I'd been at the job for, thank you. I'd been at the job for an hour. Mm -hmm. I have a missed call from a manager. And I look down and she texts. She's like, You just got an availability check for a movie. And I'm mm. like, I literally was like, God, right, like, what? I haven't had anything in a year. And this is my first day on the job, the first hour, and I'm getting an availability check for a movie. What? <laughs> so I'm like, Just confirm it. I don't know how I'm going to do it or make it work, but I was like, Confirm me and I'll figure it out. So that happened. And I told my friend, I was like, Should I say anything? And she was like, no, she's like, just wait and see what happens. If mm -hmm. you book it, then figure it out, you know, to the management. Right. So that was that day. The next day, I was getting ready for work. And a couple of years prior, I had worked on an independent film. Mm -hmm. And they were going to reshoot it. So he called me, and he's like, the writer called me mm -hmm. and producer. He was like, hey, what's your schedule for December? We're reshooting the film. I need you. And I was like, Ugh. You're I like, was well, like, December's supposed to be my slow month? Yeah, I was like, I I have a job. Like, I can't. I cried the entire way to work that day. I cried my eyes out. I remember, like, trying to clean up my face before I went in so I don't look like a crazy person yeah. walking in the second day of the job with tears, yeah. you know, coming out of my eyes. So that was weighing on me all day. You know, I still did the whole class they were giving us. Literally the same day, I get an email that afternoon. I had a director call back. Mm -hmm. for a recurring role in a TV show. Mm -hmm. And the director callback was that Thursday at 10, 15 in the morning. And at that time for the training for this job, we had to be there at 10. Mm -hmm. So I was like, crap. So I text my friend, I'm like, do I pull the whole like, right. I have a flat tire the day tiring. of, or do I say something now? She was like, no, just tell her you have an appointment. You need to come in like an hour late. Okay. And I'm like, okay. So I waited, this is, I waited for the next day till I got to work. And I was like, hey, like I need to come in late. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, oh, I have an appointment. 
And she knew before that I was in acting. So when she asked me, she was like, what is it? I wasn't going to lie to her. I was like, look, you know, I have a callback for a TV show. And she was like, look, I totally respect and like understand you have two dreams and I respect the hustle. You're trying to, you know, go for both. But if you're going to be here, we need you here 100%. Like you're going to have to choose. Mm. And in that moment, it was like, it it was a moment of clarity. I, yeah. I told her, I was like, let me think about it for, like, let me, okay, let me think about yeah. it. But literally, I knew, like, I was, like, yeah, I was quitting. Yeah. So that was in the morning, and the lunch break, I went up to her, and I was like, thank you so much for this opportunity, but this is wow. not going to work. Like, I can't. So I left the job, not having another job, still not, not having an official booking yet either. Yeah, but I just like knew. you were booked. You were just, it was, it was just, a, it was just, for me, it was like, I felt like all these signs that God was like, wait a minute. Hmm. this dream is not done it's still there yeah. things are gonna happen and, and for me I feel like since I finally surrendered and really turned everything over to him and yeah. gave him my all it was now my reward was coming because mm-hmm. I truly truly surrendered to him and trusted him yeah and so I left the job and I was like I don't know what's gonna happen but it, it was just such a, a vivid moment of clarity and, and even yeah. though I had no job and no income coming in I just felt so good and happy it was like this whole year of depression and confusion and questioning myself and my dreams, it was like all of those moments led up to that moment of just like, yeah, oh, like, no. So on the journey this last eight years, was that one year the hardest year? Oh, yeah, by far. Yeah. yeah there were, were there other things happening to you during that year? That no, I mean, overall, I wasn't happy with my bartending job. That mm-hmm. might have added more stress to it, but there wasn't anything else. It was, I think a lot of it is I'm getting older. I'm 32. Mm-hmm. You know, you put these pressures and expectations on yourself right. like I yep. by the time I'm this age I hope to have my series regular or be doing yeah. this or making this much and I was still in the kind of the same place I was like oh I'm getting older you know yeah. I want to have kids I, I want to be an established actor like nothing I think it was just a combination of right. everything getting right. older still having the bartending job not being where I wanted to be and acting the combination of all of it and then and being not 32 booking. and feeling like 32 is yeah. the oldest and it's not and it's like not but <laughs> yeah but just I think the combination of all that I was putting so much pressure on myself yeah. um that it just made it that yeah. much worse. Because yeah. there were other years that were hard, but it was just like, no, I'm good, but it's fine. But that but was a year of within like, In that journey and, and just the emotional state that you were in for that whole year, it takes a certain level of confidence to even still hold on to the dream. And it takes an immense level of resilience to even be resilient enough to be stretched that long. Mm-hmm. 365 days to be stretched and bended and feel broken mm-hmm. and questioning your, if you're worthy enough, if you're good enough, if you're pretty enough, if you're smart enough, if you're too old, if you're too young, if you're too tall, if you're too thick. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And all those thoughts run through your head as an actress and as an artist and as an entrepreneur for all of our entrepreneurs out there to feel like your dream and your goals are not going to happen but to still Stay, keep going. Still in the back of your mind, have that seed planted. I mean, it takes an, a, a huge level of resilience. So, I feel like in that journey, in, in just that year, you've earned your 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 C and your R of your crown because a lot of people just even in that one year would have said, you know, I'm just gonna go get a job, mm-hmm. or you know, I'm just gonna stick to bartending. It's making me enough money to pay my bills. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. And then when you think about the O in crown, the optimism, what was it that kept you? optimistic about this one dream still may may happen i just felt it Mm -hmm. you know you it's something that i I always tell people that whenever you because people are always like how do you know what your passion is how do you know what you want to do i'm like it's just something that is such a strong feeling that it's not like anything else you just know it and you feel it and there's nothing when it happens it's a feeling that you'll just know and you won't question you know I only questioned it because of all these pressures and things I was putting on myself, but I still had it there. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't want to let it go. Right. Like, it was still there, but it was just, you know, the being afraid and yeah. all those other things that kind of affected me. But I remember literally that year, I remember doing auditions and my friend Maria, who's coming on with you tomorrow, like, crying in between takes because I was so frustrated and I was mm-hmm. just like, nah, like, why am I doing this? I'm not going to book anything. Yeah. And I remember dreading doing auditions, hating reading the scripts, and I was like, I felt like I was losing all of that passion, and that was yeah. scary because yeah. it's like, wait, this has been like, my wait, life. This is what I'm. This has been to... my life yeah. for like all these years, and all of a sudden, is it just going to go away? And like, if it does go away, then wait, what's going to happen? What's going to be yeah. next? And what do I fall back on? What's, yeah, what do I do? So it was, it was rough. Now, did you have um, during that year? Did you have a support team? Oh, my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. Like he's the best. He's so supportive. I'm 
so so thankful for him he's always supportive like no matter what with everything that I do mm -hmm. and thankful for him you know I, I tell him I'm like if it weren't for him I wouldn't have been able to pursue my dream as hard as I did these yeah. past years because yeah. you know growing up I, I grew up really rough I started I was on my own from a really young age had to mm -hmm. pay bills I took care of my family mm -hmm. and where were your we, parents um I didn't know my dad until I was 27 mm -hmm. he wasn't in the picture and mm -hmm. then my mom um I went back and forth between my mom and my grandparents growing mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. So I went back and forth a lot. And I live with my grandparents more, so they're kind of like my parents. Why did you go back and forth? Just my mom had a lot of kids. She was struggling. Mm -hmm. And initially, I first moved with my grandparents because I was starting school. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be moving around and I was stable. Right. So I stayed with them, and it kind of always stayed that way. And then I think second grade, it was second grade, my little sister passed away. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go back with my mom. Yeah. And I was there for a year. And then my mom got evicted from her apartment. Mm. So I had to move back with my grandparents. And then I stayed with my grandparents. What city for, was this? This is all here in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Like so Chambly. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I stayed with my grandparents until I think it was like seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And then they were having some issues. So I went back with my mom. And then mm -hmm. I stayed with my mom until the middle of ninth grade. And then I went back with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like back and forth a lot. And with my boyfriend, he just told me like that year whenever I quit my job he was like don't worry mm -hmm. like don't and I was like what I gotta work I need money like what am I do he's like right. just he's like don't worry like I've got you just mm -hmm. do what you like do what you love mm -hmm. focus on that and then it'll come he's like and if it doesn't come then you'll figure something else out but don't put the pressure on yourself so mm -hmm. that made it a lot more comfortable on my end because yeah. I knew and then to have I mean just to have uh, an upbringing where it was a bit unstable where you're going back and forth and mm -hmm. going from grandparent to parent and then just having that solid rock that's yeah. just like, because you guys have been together oh, a while For so now. long, yeah. Nine, nine years. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you've, you've been together for nine years, so it's so important to have that anchor and to have that rock, especially oh, yeah. coming from, you know, a, a, an upbringing where you're moving around a lot. Yeah. So, you know, we're so thankful for our, our support teams, and it's so important yes. on this journey as you're building your crown. And whatever, to, uh, whatever industry you're everything. in or whatever walk of life, having a support team is so, so critical. And, um... I believe in mentorship. I believe in having a mentor. I believe in having solid friends who keep you grounded and a spouse who keeps yes. you grounded and really, really supports you. Um, so kudos to boyfriend. Um, yes. If you watch for, Thank for being, you. For being I that love rock. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you got past that year and you, you, you went to New York. You sold many seeds in New York within yourself because you were strengthening your craft, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think the willpower to even go to New York and stay there for five weeks and train and to study, where did that willpower come from? I just really wanted to do it. I was really scared, mm -hmm. but I've never, like for me, I, I went to a community college. I never went away for college. Mm -hmm. I've always lived in Georgia. I've never moved anywhere mm -hmm. away. I've always just been here in Atlanta, and that's yeah. kind of like my life. When I decided I wanted to be an actress, I always, in the beginning, I had in the back of my head, eventually I'm going to have to go to L.A. or New York. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to move. Right. But things shifted and the industry changed and right. it worked out to where staying here was, you know, right. the move to make. So it worked out so much in my favor, but I'd never done anything like that. So mm -hmm. it was like, it was just kind of like, scary. you know what? Like it was scary. It, I was like, you know, I don't have kids yet. I'm not going to be able to do these sorts of things once I do have mm -hmm. kids. Like why not do it now? It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Why not just go for it and yeah. just see what happens and yep. just do it for the experience. So, and then also I was like going to New York, getting that training. Where did in, you stay? Um, a studio. My friend Marie and I, we actually stayed in a studio together. We went together. Okay. Um, we stayed in Gramercy Park. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It so was you guys super went together. nice. So you, again, yeah. So support team. Have yes. to have that support team. We were there taping each other's auditions, like till one in the morning. She was in school at the time. Like it was crazy. That's but so awesome. It was awesome. insane, but it was awesome. So we're getting to my favorite part of the crown, the end. We talked about the confidence, how you built your confidence, how you were resilient for that whole year, how you were able to continue to think optimistically because, you know, God planted a seed in you mm -hmm. and you felt like you had a purpose and a passion and you had the undying willpower to stay the course. Yes. And I always tell people, stay the course. You have to. Going to New York, taking that risk, just jumping, not having a job but still jumping. Steve Harvey says the parachute doesn't open until you jump and you, mm -hmm. you took that leap of faith and you jumped. Or that take the leap and the net will appear. Yep. Yes. Um, when you're building the crown, the most one of the most important parts of the crown is the end, the non-negotiables. So you you did all this and you mm -hmm. built all this. How did you set non-negotiables? What are your non-negotiables? 
What do you mean? As far as so as far as like so not negotiable. Like I believe you got to teach people how to treat you, and you have to set boundaries with people, places, and things. Mm-hmm. Like for example, your husband and your wife, a husband and wife. You have to set non negotiables. Like this is how I like to be treated. Like I remember when um, my husband and I first started dating. Um, we went on a date, and he dropped me off and just drove off. And, like, he didn't, like, make You're sure like, I got in the door. <laughs> and I called him. I said, this is a very clear non-negotiable for me. You you make sure I get in the door. <laughs> and kiss me goodnight. <laughs> and, and, and make sure I'm safe. Make sure that I'm not in anybody's view anymore before you just drive off. Okay. So you have to set very clear, clear non-negotiables with people and, and with your career. Like, I had not, I had um, a conversation with my, with my manager earlier. Like, hey, I'm no longer reading for co-stars. Like, I'm just not, and that's a non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. So on this path of building your crown and being Erica Page and wearing your crown, what are non-negotiables that you have set for your life, for your career, and for your um, relationships? Definitely the support system, the people that I surround myself with, that mm-hmm. is everything that you can – it's everything. It's so, so important. So mm-hmm. I just – if I if I'm not feeling your energy, if I feel like you're bringing negative energy my way, right. I, uh-uh, you got to go. I can't yeah. have you around me. Um, definitely that. And then I just – like whenever I was working, my mm-hmm. non-negotiable was like, I have to have a job of flexibility. If mm-hmm. you can't give me flexibility, then I can't work here. Yeah. <laughs> that was the thing, you know, before. But I think the biggest thing is probably the support system, that mm-hmm. the people that you surround yourself with. That's everything. And it's so important because mm-hmm. our energy is contagious and we yeah. rub off on each other. And when you have that people building you up, it's just, it's infectious. Yeah, it, absolutely. It, it really is. And I think it's it's key yeah. with, with everything in life, not even just your career, just everything. Yeah. With everything. How does it feel being a Hispanic actress? Is there do you feel any um, uh, challenges or obstacles being Hispanic? So yes and no. Um, right now we're going through this whole big diversity thing, so mm-hmm. it's a big plus for Hispanic actors. Yes. But at the end of the day, when you go and you look at leads and films and stuff, we're still not getting a lot of those lead roles, right. Right. the big series regulars. It's getting better for mm-hmm. sure. But it really is not where it needs to be still. It's right. good, It's improving 100%, but we still have a long way to go. Now, have there been times where, because you are very racially ambiguous, have there been times where you have um, just played just a straight American, or do you use your, your, your Spanish I get, um, blood to... I do both. Um, most of the things I read for are Hispanic or ethnically ambiguous. Okay. I have booked some things that said Caucasian. Okay. But... Um, Normally, almost everything I read for is ethnically ambiguous or, okay. cauc- or, or Latina. It's Latina, okay. Yeah. What are some doors that you want to open and, and, think, and lanes that you want to create for um, brown actresses and, and Hispanic actresses? Oh, I would definitely love to produce my own content for sure one day. That's I don't know when, but that's definitely something that in the future, a million percent, I would love to direct. Um, yeah, I would love. I would have my own fashion line. I love fashion. Nice. I love clothes. That's another dream. But yeah, definitely, I just want to create my own content as well. I'm not so much a writer. I think I'm more of like on the production side of things, right. getting it all together. But I definitely want to create more opportunities for not even just Hispanic, but mm-hmm. Asians and yes. Indian and, and all those because mm-hmm. it's so limited. Yeah, like the Hispanics, we think we have it bad. Asians have it horrible. Like mm-hmm. it's they rarely get roles that say we need a. Chinese or Asian, it's so rare and right. it's not fair. So I definitely would have that be one of the main keys. Great and content that I focus on. With, a, with a little with bit more everything. diversity. Yes. Um, with brown, with everything, with, with black, with with Asian. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, but then I, honestly, lately I was just talking to my friend about this recently. I kind of feel bad for Caucasian people now because yes, over the years Caucasians have been killing it and lead, getting all the leads, but people who are just now in the game. Mm-hmm are kind of getting affected by that in a negative way because they're not getting those opportunities. So it does kind of suck for them. I would just have every color, every everybody right, on everybody. my show or my and movie. And I think it's really important what you said, creating your own content. I, and I would say create, don't wait. So I think all of us as artists and actresses and producers and directors and filmmakers should just start creating our own. We can't continue to wait for anybody to give us the green light to mm-hmm. tell us when to go, to say, hey, your script is picked up. Hey, your product is picked up. I think it's important for us all to um, have a little bit of ownership and, and create and, and create these these di- uh, ver- di- create these diverse lanes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, totally. I'm so, so grateful that you came on my show today and graced, my, having me. graced my crown today. You've, yes. you've definitely done the work 
in building your crown and, and building your confidence. And as a, it's not, been a process, <laughs> not even just as an actress, but as a woman, it's mm -hmm. so important for us to build our confidence so we can walk into any door and know that we belong in there. And we can walk in any table and, and sit at any table and understand that we belong at this table. Mm -hmm. So for you to build that confidence and keep that confidence and be resilient over this eight year time span and 32 year time span of you living mm -hmm. and that one year of you really just having a crazy, crazy year to have that resilience, to be bended, to be broken, to be stretched and to, re and to still have the willpower to bounce back and fight back and think optimistically and know that it's the light is at the end of the it's tunnel. Gonna, it's coming. And setting coming. those clear non-negotiables for what you want as a woman and as an actress is, is so amazing. And you have completely earned your crown. So I'm going to crown you ah. today with my little Thank crown, you. Erica Page. Oh, my bun isn't helping. But. <laughs> Erica Page has definitely earned her crown. And you can catch her on the OWN Network. Ooh, uh, yes. If you didn't know, that's Oprah's And network. last call. Hello. So there's two shows. Yes. I got. So oh, let me yes. really quick, just to say, like, the reward that came at the end, after my I crossed my Red Sea, Yes. Um, I left the job, and not long, I think it was a few weeks later, I booked a possibly recurring role on a TV show called The Resident. Okay. Um, and then after that, January, we worked on the independent film that the guy had reached out to me about. Mm -hmm. And then I booked my first guest star role like the next month, and it just kept just going because, consistently. Wow. And then I booked my first series regular role, which is a show called Last Call. It'll be on Bounce TV. Yes, it airs Bounce. January 7th at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, it's a funny sitcom. I, I play the role of Rachel. It's super funny and light. Carl Payne's in it. Uh, TC Carson. Carson is in yeah, it. it was it was a great experience. And then right now, I did an episode. Yes, so I'll be with you on the show. She did. Yeah. And of ambitions. And ambitions. Yeah. And then ambitions comes out in March, and that'll be on the own network. Yes, Bounce so. TV. Last call. Roger Bob yes. production. Uh, Bobcat Films production. Yep. Right. Um, January seventh. Yes, January seventh. January seventh. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Monday nights. There's Monday twelve nights. episodes. Bounce TV. Let's show bounce some love. Yes, yes. Last call. Yes, bounce. And then we've got <laughs> ambitions on the own network. Yes. When does it start airing? That'll be. I believe it's March seventeenth. Um, I don't know the exact. I think it's nine. I could be wrong. I know March seventeenth. March seventeenth coming to the own network. Yes. So she's gonna be on bounce and on at the same time. Yes. So watch out for Miss Erica Page as <laughs> Bella in yes. ambitions on the own network. And what was your character's name in Last Call? Uh, last call is Rachel. Rachel, on and then last Bella call. on ambition. So we're so excited to see this eight-year journey and that and that year that was just a crucial year and that year set you up and propelled you into what's happening. This crown, now. yes, and what's happening with your life right now and God's purpose for your life and that was just a testament to say, stay the course. Yes, eight years you could and been trust. Quit. He's trust him. Yes. Trust him. Trust in God. Yes. Stay the course. He already has a path paved for you with your name on it. He's just preparing you. Every year that you think it's a step back, it's a step up. It's a yes. set up because he's preparing you to propel you into who you were destined to be. And as you can see, that's what happened with Erica Page. So thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. And we will see you on the next Beneath the Crown. Bye. Hey. <laughs>